San Andreas Fault, how strike slip faults form and lead to earthquakes. This is by Janet Lathrop, University of Massachusetts at Amherst on phys.org. Structural geologist Michelle Cook tells it in the million dollar question that underlies all work in her laboratory at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. What goes on deep in the earth as strike slip faults form in the crust? This is the fault type that occurs when two tectonic plates slide past one another, generating the waves of energy we sometimes feel as earthquakes. And this is what we have seen going on these past few days from the 6.4 magnitude on July 4th and the day later in the evening of July 5th the 7.1. We have pictures of the tarmac on the highway having displaced at the crack and slipping beside each other. There are now, of course, they closed down. I think that was Highway 178. They've closed it down for repairs. Now, uh, what goes deep on deep in the earth as strike slip faults form the crust? This is a fault type that occurs when two tectonic plates slide past one another, generating the waves of energy we sometimes feel as earthquakes. Geologists have been uncertain about the factors that govern how new faults grow. And in recent years, Cook said she and colleagues have offered the first systematic exploration of such fault evolution. In their new paper, she and her team of students provide experimental results to illustrate the process with videos and report on how, to, how they reenact such events in wet clay in the lab. Details appear in the current online edition of Journal of Structural Geology. Cook says, when I give talks to other geologists, I put up a picture of the fault and ask, wouldn't you love to be able to see exactly how that formed? Well, in my lab, that's what we do. We set up the conditions for faulting on a small scale and watch them unfold. People have done this before, but we developed something, uh, some methods so we can see faults grow in very, very fine detail at a finer resolution than anyone has documented before. The University of Mass at Amherst researchers take a mechanically efficient, mechanical efficiency approach to understanding fault development. It states that faults in the crust reorganize in accord with work optimization principles that, uh, or what Cook refers to as the lazy earth, quote unquote, hypothesis. It focuses on fault systems effectiveness at transforming input energy into movement along the faults like lightning striking the closest object when forming a fault, the Earth takes the simplest path. For this National Science Foundation supported work, the researchers load a tray with kaolin, also known as china clay, prepared so it, its viscosity and length scale to that of the Earth's crust. And the experiments involve two slabs of wet clay moving in opposite directions under one of these base boundary conditions, that is, different ways of loading the fault, one scenario being with a pre-existing fault, another with localized displacement beneath the clay, and the third that is characterized by displacement across a wide zone of shear beneath the clay. Data from the two-hour experiments record strain, localization, and fault evolution that represents millions of years at the scales of tens of kilometers during strike slip fault maturation. Cook says, we have captured very different conditions for fault formation in our experiments that represent a range of conditions that might drive faulting in the crust. And she adds, we found that faults do evolve to increase kinematic efficiency under different conditions and we learned some surprising things along the way. One of them is that faults shut off along the way. We suspected this, but our experiment is the first to document this in detail. Another especially surprising finding is that the fault, faults, fault irregularities, which are inefficient, persist rather than system from, the, from a straight efficient fault. 
the authors who include graduate student Alex Hattem and Kevin Tonnebaum identify four stages in fault evolution, pre-faulting, localization, linkage, and slip. The process starts simply, advances to a peak of complexity, after which complexity suddenly drops off and the fault simplifies again, lengthening into a throw going or continuous single surface crack. In videos by Hatem, shear strain is clearly seen to distort the crust along the area where two base plates meet. In the next stage, numerous echelon faults develop. These are step-like fracture parallel to each other that get pulled lengthwise as strain increases until they suddenly link. And in the last stage, these join to form a final single fault. And Cook says, we are very excited to see that the portions of the fault shut off as the system reorganizes and also as the irregularities persisted along the faults. An interesting finding, but not a surprise, that is, for the most part, all faults went through a similar process. Cook says, we tested the various extremes but came out of this with a kind of the common kind of evolution that's true for all. If there's not already a fault, then you see echelon faults. Small faults parallel to each other, but at an angle to the shear. Probably the most insightful bit is the details of fault evolution within those extremes. What if you're left with, uh, at the end, is a long fault with abandoned segments on either side, which is something we see in the field all the time. It's a nice confirmation that our lab experiment replicate what is going on within the Earth." End quote. Another insight, the researchers say, results from measuring the kinematic or geometric efficiency, the percent of applied displacement expressed as slip on the faults. Quote, an inefficient fault will have less slip and more deformation around the zones. End quote. This is what Cook explains. We can see it happening in the experiments, and it supports the idea that faults evolve to become efficient and the Earth optimizes work. This is a lazy earth. The efficiency is increasing even though the fault is becoming more complex. Finally, the geologist adds, quote, We saw that when the faults eventually link up, they don't necessarily make a perfectly straight line, a straight fault. That tells me that irregularities can persist along mature faults because of the material. It's an insight into how you get persistent irregularities that we see in the earth's a real, the real Earth's crust. Structural geologists are surprised by irregularities because if faults evolve to minimize work, then all faults should be straight. But we have evidence now to show these irregularities persist. We have irregular faults that are active for millions of years. End quote. Earth is lazy when forming faults like those near San Andreas. This is by the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, and it's on phys.org, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube 
channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.